everybody and welcome to this class on cardboard sculpture with the Essex Art Center. My name is Justin Kettle and I'm going to be your teacher. In this class we are going to be learning about a lot of different artists, um, some older artists, some artists who are working now, and along with that we are going to be learning how to make our own sculptures out of cardboard just from different pieces of cardboard or other objects you have lying around the house. This is going to be a really fun class and today we are going to start with learning about an artist named Alexander Calder. He's one of my favorite artists and we will be learning a type of cardboard sculpture called slotting and tabbing. And materials you will need today for this class, you're going to need some extra cardboard, obviously, so just find any boxes you have lying around the house. We're also going to need a few tools. We're going to need some scissors, maybe an X-Acto knife to use to cut the cardboard into pieces. These tools can be a little bit dangerous, so be sure you have an adult helping you out today. You can use a marker or a pen to draw some shapes into the cardboard. You'll need some type of glue or tape to put the cardboard together at the very end. I'm using a hot glue gun, which again is a little bit dangerous. It's something you would want an adult to help you use, but you can use any type of glue or tape if you want. And we're also going to use some paints to add some color to our sculpture at the very end. So without further ado, let's get started. To start off, we're going to talk a little bit more about who Alexander Calder was. He was an artist who worked from the 1920s all the way through the 1970s, and he made artwork that we like to call abstract artwork. Abstract artwork is artwork that is not a painting of a person or a landscape or something that we see in the world around us. It's artwork that is all about how beautiful colors and shapes can be by themselves. So today we're not going to worry about making something that looks exactly like something else that we see around us. We're just going to think about how beautiful colors and shapes can be. Okay, so we are going to get started on building our own Alexander Calder inspired sculptures. What you're going to want to do, any cardboard boxes you have lying around the house, you're going to want to cut them into pieces um, using scissors or an X-Acto knife. If you are um, younger and you're doing this, please be sure to ask help from a parent or a guardian. We don't want you to accidentally hurt yourself because scissors can be kind of dangerous. But you're going to cut a cardboard box up into pieces, and as you're, gonna, as you're cutting this box, you're going to notice cardboard boxes have these nice seams and folds in them that help the boxes fold up into their different boxy shapes. Um, we want to cut the boxes up along these seams. We don't want these foldy edges in our sculptures because they'll make them kind of unstable. So again, get some help from a parent or a guardian. Cut those pieces up so you get some nice smaller rectangular pieces like this without any folds in them. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to start drawing shapes into these pieces. and We're going to cut out those shapes later. Now remember, abstract art, like Alexander Calder did, is all about the beauties of shapes and colors by themselves. So these can be any shapes you want. You can do circles, squares, triangles. If you remember, Alexander Calder did some big kind of swoopy shapes. You can do kind of big art shapes like that. Maybe I'll do another one big pointy shape. You can do a little smaller one in that corner. Try not to waste the cardboard. Draw a big crazy one here. There we go. There's a few. I have more cardboard. I'm going to draw some more shapes and cut them out. And I'll join you guys when I have them all cut out. Okay, so I have cut out all kinds of different fun and funky shapes. We will just use these to start off with. And you can cut out more shapes as you go. It just depends on how much cardboard you have. But now what we're going to do, and I'm going to tilt this up a little bit so we can see better. We're going to start putting these shapes together. So what I'm thinking, I've been looking at these shapes, and I really like these two kind of arch shapes. And I would kind of like to put them standing up and I would like to connect them with this kind of loopy shape right here. So what we're going to do, the construction method we're using today is called slotting and tabbing. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut little grooves or little slots in the cardboard so that the cardboard fits one piece into the other. And then we can put these together like a jigsaw puzzle almost. 
So what I'm going to do, I'm going to think about this. I'd kind of like the cardboard to connect right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut just a little kind of rectangle into here, very, very thin. So make two cuts. Going to pull out that piece of excess cardboard right there. Cut it off. So we have this little slot or groove in your cardboard right there. And we're going to, it already kind of fits in, but we're going to put another slot right here for those two pieces to fit together. Mm -hmm. Cut that off. There we go. And there we go. Now those two, two pieces fit together. And now I am just going to start putting all these random pieces car of cardboard together using that slotting method. Cutting two slots into these different pieces so that they fit together really nice and easily to start building a sculpture. Okay, I have completed my Alexander Calder inspired sculpture. As you can see, I have fit all of these pieces together. Um, and I have not glued anything into place as of yet. While you're first building your sculpture, I recommend that you don't use glue so that you can kind of take the pieces off, re rearrange them however you want. However, I am very happy with the arrangement of all of these pieces right now. So I think I am going to start gluing these things together. And I am going to use a hot glue gun, which again is kind of a dangerous tool. It's very, very hot, so ask an adult to help you out. And what we're going to do to glue these pieces together, we'll just start with this piece on the top here. We're just going to put a small bead of glue, squeeze on that hot glue gun trigger, put it on the inside of that slot, and then we're just going to slide that back on there, hold that on there for a second, and then let go, let go and it should be glued into place. And now I am going to just go around and do that for all of these pieces. You do not have to use hot glue. You can use any other type of glue you have lying around the house. You can also use tape if you only have tape. Just anything to secure all of these pieces into place. So there's those two. And if it helps, it can get a little bit confusing as you're taking this thing apart and trying to put it back together again. So what you can do is take your marker that we used before and you can start labeling pieces if you want. So let's see, we'll label this piece as number one, and we'll put another little number one next to it, right there. So when I take this off, put glue on it, and put it back on, I know it goes back with that number one. So I'm gonna finish gluing this all together, and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done. All right, I have glued everything together, and as you can see, I've also added some color. I just used some paints that I had lying around the house. Um, I painted them all these different shapes, these different colors. If you remember Alexander Calder, he liked to use usually one color, but again, abstract art is about the beauty of shape and color together, so you can use whatever kind of colors you want, whatever kind of shapes you want. I painted these shapes after I glued everything together, however, um, it might be easier for you to paint the shapes before um, before you assemble the piece. Anyways, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I had a lot of fun showing you guys how to make abstract cardboard sculptures. For our next lesson, we'll be talking about another artist and more fun and interesting ways to make sculptures out of cardboard. I look forward to teaching you more then.